So today's controversial topic is data engineering is just a glorified database administrator. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna agree, right? Obviously, obviously you're-, you're just, re just repeat that stupid <laughs> statement of yours again. Welcome to another episode of Deep Data Discussions here at Spatial Edge. I'm your host, Pierre Leroux, and today, again, I have Cornier Furi, our Head of Data Engineering. Welcome. Okay, I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball here. Okay. So today's controversial topic is, data engineering is just a glorified database administrator. <laughs> you... Okay, so so ground rules, no body shots only. Okay, <laughs> not the money maker. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna agree, right? Obviously, obviously, you you agree. Just, re just repeat that stupid <laughs> statement of yours again. <laughs> <laughs> Data engineering is just a glorified database administrator. I didn't come up with this. Ooh, <laughs> this <was> <laughs> <clears throat> strongly disagree. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll, dis I'll disagree on this one. Oh, okay, okay. Strongly. <laughs> <laughs> almost that was got, close. That was close. Almost, almost got blixed in there. <clears throat> I'll open up with Data engineering, like data engineering is similar to database administration in some sense because you have to sometimes be on-prem and work with the databases and administer some of those databases, no? Well, okay, first off, you never have to be on-prem. Um, oh, work with an on-prem system. You might want to work with an on-prem system, yes. No, in, in that sense, I will definitely say that obviously database administration is a component of data engineering, though... I will say that database administration is a specialized skill in and of itself. Um, as a good data engineer, you obviously want to have a good uh, <clears throat> understanding of a number of database technologies so that you, you want to know database technologies or the data technologies. I'll just use the word databases, but it's the overarching concept of all things that store data. Um, you want to know those tools well enough that you can make a, a decision on what is the best tool for the job. Mm. Um, for instance, a silly example, but if I'm, if I'm working with a, a metrics that's emitted from a, a IoT device or from any other kind of system, I'm probably going to look at something like Prometheus as a, mm. as a, as a system because I know that's a good database system. That's a good data system for that kind of, kind of information, time series data. If I'm looking at um, a retail software backend where transactional consistency is key. I'm probably going to look at something like, you know, SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres. Mm -hmm. Not really my SQL. Um, but a good distributed, potentially high volume capable database. Yeah, not necessarily distributed because oh, it doesn't, um, okay, doesn't have yeah, to yeah. be. But doesn't have, yeah, yeah. But data, um, yeah. and yes, if I'm looking at massive data processing, for instance, for my data science team, then I'm definitely going to say I want to look at a distributed database system that yes. can scale out horizontally, and I can take uh, lots of data on there. Similarly, if I'm building a, a, a real-time scoring system um, where I have a whole bunch of features that I want to access and update in real time. Again, I'm going to look at something like Cassandra, which is horizontally scalable, key store, super fast. It's the right tool for the job. Administering a Cassandra box on the other hand, that is a specialized skill. Um, high level, I can get a Cassandra cluster up and running for you and I can, you know, I can get it to a point where we can do a whole bunch of stuff and, and start breaking it. Once it starts breaking, um, and I speak from experience, um, you need people who really understand the administration of a Cassandra system. And similarly, you need the, a, an administrator for an Oracle system, as an example, because just because you can administer an Oracle system doesn't mean you can administer a, uh, a Cassandra system. Okay. Um, 
So this becomes very specialized depending yes. on the technology, yes. such that you must almost, you must really know the technology well. You must almost be one of the contributors even to the code base of handling that technology to really get the performance uh, when it starts breaking at high volumes, get the, the stability of the system. Just make sure that this thing is very well implemented, well oiled and well maintained. Exactly. Tweaked, tuned to the, the, the perfect amount. I mean... Maybe a, a question on this as well. So similarly as then a data engineer can be a high level database administrator, but you still need your specialist to, to really make sure this thing hums and, and performs well. I'm assuming that it goes the other way as well. A database administrator is not easily going to just jump up and, and start becoming a, a great data engineer. No. It's a different set of skills exactly. and abilities and tools that you need. Even though it's in the data world, and for the outside person, it might sound very similar, which is why the, I guess the question and why you bring up the yeah, question, yeah. but it's just not the case. No, no, it's, it's exactly. You being a great database administrator um, does not make you necessarily a, a good data engineer. Um, and being a very good data engineer doesn't, I know for a fact, doesn't make you a good database administrator. You're a, as a data engineer, you'll be a fairly adequate uh, database administrator for, like I said, for the for the largest parts, you'll be you'll be able to get everything everything done and dusted, um, but. To get the real performance out of out of that specific system, um, no, I, I I don't think so. It's it's it takes too much of a specialization, uh, and there's just too many tools. Um, I think I think I think that's that's the point again. So, a person can be a data engineer, can learn skills on Cassandra and can actually become really good, in essence, good enough to be a database administrator in Cassandra. A person can have both those skills. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to be spending your time adding value in the data engineering world, you, you don't have the time, nor the patience, nor the, the necessity, the luxury of digging deep and really learning Cassandra, exactly. because you have to deal with many different databases, you have to deal with analytical systems, and you have to address and solve a specific client's problem. Exactly. So that's where you're going to build your skills. That's where you're going to maintain your skills because that's where you're adding value. But when you're in the Cassandra world and this is your this is your bread and butter, this is how you make money, this is how you operate, this is the thing that you know really, really well, and people pay you a high premium for that understanding for when they've got a Cassandra database, then they've got to know it. I mean, I love it. It's just different settings, a different setup, a different environment. It's like a different engine. Exactly. As a mechanic, you could work on different engines, but if you are going to take your Ferrari to your little chop shop, yeah, you're going to be in trouble. You need to take that to a specialized. Exactly. Yeah. I, 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 exactly my thinking as well. If you've got, you know, you can take your, not that you should, kids, but you can take your Ferrari to, you know, Bob's parts down in wherever, and he can change the tire for you, or you know he can swap out the battery, those kinds of things. There's a couple of things that you know every any kind of mechanic can do in any case, all over the show. But uh, tweaking the performance of your Ferrari engine, no. Um, I don't want somebody to work on that. But okay, I think. Um, Similarly, I wouldn't take a Toyota to a Ferrari mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> that would cost you a lot of money. Cost you a lot of money. Um, but yeah, it's it's two different, two very specific different systems. You, you've got a skill set that's specific to that system or that engine. Um, and that parts of it will carry across, but not enough. And actually now to finish this off, now then bringing back again to data engineering, what that then essentially means in data engineering world as well is, you become very good at building pipelines with different technologies and that sometimes transfers. Sometimes you can even get deeper into some technologies and understand how it works, but there's a lot of principles and how it gets done and you get to deal with a lot of different data sets and sometimes curveballs and interesting use cases that you just like, how does this even work? Uh, how are we supposed to get this in, especially when somebody starts asking it in just Excel files? Yeah. But that being said... Well, get a shotgun. <laughs> 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 Ways and means. Um, but then, so that's a specialization in itself. And I'd like just then maybe to finish with that.